Hey there, Bob from Oregon's Constant Gardener. Welcome to the OCG Fam Show to you, my YouTube buddies. Today, we're talking about plant nutrient deficiencies, how to diagnose them and how to fix them, uh, specifically if you're using nectar for the gods, but also in general as well. And this is part two. In part one, we covered how to tell if you actually do have a deficiency, checking your parts per million, uh, checking your pH, that sort of thing. In this episode, we're gonna talk about diagnosing specific deficiencies, which mineral is lacking, and uh, what to do about that. Next time in episode three, we'll cover uh, kind of an overview of the whole process day to day, how you deal with it. And then in episode four, we're gonna be talking about using uh, nectar for the gods Herculean harvest with Bloom Chaos where you can often create your own deficiency by pushing your plants so hard to try to get that output and to get exactly what you're looking for. How to not have those problems. So this is episode two. I've got Tim McCormick was here a little bit ago and we did a you know whole thing about this. That's what the video is gonna be. So watch this video and I'll talk to you after. Okay, so we're talking about deficiencies with Tim. We were talking yesterday. I told you that all in the intro, so I don't need to go through that again. I'll just go right into this. So I got my plant there. Mm -hmm. I figured out that no, no, it's not a, a lockout. I've got good PPMs, I got good pH, I'm solid, but I got some, some symptoms there that make me think my plant's not happy. Sure. So could you go through, you know, the top three, four, whatever of those symptoms are, and you know, we can get into a, a third video where we do practical, like how you actually do it day to day with it, sure. but what products you would use, how you would deal with certain things, and maybe they go from like the most popular, most common one to the you know, not so common one. Sure. What do you got? All right, so probably the most common uh, deficiency we see is magnesium deficiency. Yeah, okay. Um, that isn't always a magnesium deficiency. Right. Sometimes when you see the tri tiger striping, which is the, the tall tail sign of a magnesium deficiency. And is just describe that to me a little bit, what that yeah. would look so like. So you know you have, you have the, the finger, the, the yeah. finger of the leaf, leaf. Uh -huh. and then you have uh, the veins coming off the finger right. of the leaf. Uh -huh. In between each vein, it will start to yellow. Right, okay. And it looks like a green, yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow. Oh, so okay. It looks like it's tiger striping. I understand. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, so it's it, at, the, at the, the, the skeletal part of the leaf, it's, I'll see yellowing there. The, the 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 tissue part the tissue, tissue the part. vein vein tissue vein tissue and in between right. each vein you'll see the tissue and the tissue will be yellow oh, okay the I vein understand. will stay green the vein will stay green the tissue is, okay uh -huh. and so okay. it looks like a tiger stripe sure okay. um this can be caused by a couple different things lay it on me the most common that i see that i have encountered personally most nectar users mm -hmm. encounter is low ph a low ph will cause the plant from being locked out from magnesium Okay. So we get the pH up through, oh, through herb flushing okay. to get it back up there so the plant can take in the magnesium. It's not that there's no magnesium there, it's that the plant doesn't have access to it because the pH is too low. Okay, so let, let's get into this a little bit. Let me ask some questions. So well, I guess we have like a range of like 6.2, 6.8 where we want to be, yep. but uh, the magnesium falls to an edge of that range or something? Is that is that true? Or? The, the pH falls below that range. So the 6.2 to 6.8 oh, is where magnesium okay. is available. Once you dip below that range, magnesium starts becoming less available. Oh, okay. So it's not that it's not there mm -hmm. you're just less uptake into the plant and now okay. the plant's like i'm hungry for magnesium because the ph is off inside the and soil. the magnesium is abundant in most good potting soil it's correct abundant most potting okay. soils also um a lot inside uh your cocoa okay because um, cocoa likes to absorb it and hold oh, it okay itself, so okay. you just need to get the cocoa to okay. release it um so it's, it's usually there. So it's usually, unless you have a really hungry magnesium plant. Which I could have. You could have, very well. Or I could have eaten up all my magnesium. Maybe I didn't have good soil to start with. Or maybe I thought I had good soil, I didn't. Right. Okay, so assuming that, that, that the pH is in line. Right. Is that the first thing I check with the magnesium it, deficiency? Yep. See where my pH, I, I do a slurry test on my soil. Mm -hmm. And you okay. see where the pH is in your slurry. Okay. And then from there, if your if your slurry is fine. You, well, that, I mean, that's just, if, my, if my pH was inconclusive, like it was, Kind of more toward the bottom of the range, or and I'm not. Would I try to like bring my pH up, or can I go too high for my magnesium as well? Uh, would I go? Would I air too high or low? You would air high. You okay. would, low is where the problem starts. So I'd start happen. trying to get up my six eight or something if I, you know. Yeah, okay. you try to get it up. Okay. Um, however, you know, it's not always the pH. Sure. If your pH your soil is great, you don't have any problems with your pH. What's you going might just on be then? low on, on magnesium. Okay. Your plant just could have eaten all the magnesium and now it needs a little more because it's just that hungry magnesium plant. Sure, okay. Um, mm -hmm. So what we can do sure. is using the Medusa's magic, which has 
1% magnesium in it. Uh -huh. And then using Demeter's, which chelates the magnesium, it, 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 okay. it grabs it and then transports it inside the plant real fast. Okay. With these two combined, we can usually get rid of any magnesium problems. Okay. Now, like Scott said, some plants are just really magnesium hungry. It's just their game. Ahead of time, you can put Epsom salts in your soil. But what I do is I just increase my Medusa a little bit and I increase my Demeter's and that pulls uh, okay. all the magnesium and pushes it into the plant. Okay. So this okay. provides you, Medusa provides you with a little bit of magnesium and then the Demeter's helps transport it and get it into the plant faster. So would you say that magnesium is, for lack of a better word, kind of a finicky element to get into your plant? And so you, 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 you'd be thinking about that from the start? It can be. Okay. And so I would always make sure I at least have a way to get magnesium into my plant if I really need it. Okay. Now let me ask you this. So why wouldn't I just err on the side of caution and have some salt crazy and go high on these? Well, sometimes plants don't need that much magnesium and sometimes magnesium can antagonize calcium. Okay. So it's all about having everything in the proper balance and proportions. So that's the thing I was asking. That's a, that's because a lot of people will say, hey, you know, people, it's the natural feeling. I felt this way. It's like, well, I'm low on magnesium. I'll just go get a ton of magnesium and throw it in there. And that's not necessarily the, the why am I talking so loud? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, it's excited. It's, it's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and yeah, it's not necessarily the proper angle to go at it. It's okay. just grab it and throw it in there all at once because sometimes that can cause more problems too. And you think you're, and so you may just keep pouring the coals to it because you think I'm not getting there, I'm not getting there, I'm not getting there. When in fact you've gone, you've overshot the mark and you're just burying it in that. And it, exactly. just the magnesium, I mean, for lack of a not, you know, better term getting in front of that calcium at some point and, and not and making it difficult to... same with potassium people uh -huh. think you have to use a high amounts of potassium in flour uh -huh. and when you put start using high amounts of potassium with high calcium loads the potassium slips in front of the calcium and you're now uh -huh. pulling in more potassium than you are calcium okay so it's just a matter of knowing the the, the rate at which you need things okay so just as a summary I got a magnesium issue. Mm -hmm. First thing to look at, I think I have magnesium issue because I see the tiger striping. First thing is to get my pH. Yep. But would you proactively go after a little more of this or would you wait till you see where that pH drops before I would, you do? I would make sure the pH is where you need it to okay. be because you can put anything you want into the root zone, but if the pH is still out of whack, okay. it's still not going to pull it up. Okay. So you got to address the pH first, make sure it's not a pH issue, uh -huh. and then if you're like, all right, my pH is fine, then you know you, you have a magnesium deficiency issue, then you want to add more magnesium okay. once you know that you don't have enough in there. Would you foley your feed to uh, get your plant over the hump with that while you're doing this? Yes. Okay. Yes, I would. Okay. Um, if I do see the foliage lack magnesium and cause that tiger striping, mm -hmm. foliar Fix spraying that. magnesium helps. While I'm diagnosing and fixing my soil. Exactly. Okay. Um, that just makes sure the plant gets gets some magnesium on the leaves, gets absorbed immediately, and you don't have to wait for it to get sucked up to the root system. Um, you can use a product like MagAmp for that if you need. Okay. Uh, from Cutting Edge Solutions. Okay. And so uh, also, like, could you foliar with some Epsom salts? You could foliar with Epsom salts too. Epsom mm -hmm. salts just kind of pain because they're little granules that you have to like break down mm -hmm. and have to make sure that they dissolve all the way. The MagAmp is, is the easy solution mm -hmm. to the situation. It's liquid. You just put a couple squirts inside of a water bottle and spray your plant and okay. you'll see it happen real Quick. Okay, so what would you say is like the next uh, deficiency? Um, probably nitrogen deficiency. Okay. Now, how would that manifest? So you would see the the big families, the oldest family. Same with magnesium issues are always so on the biggest down, families. Oh, down. The down oldest, down. the oldest leaves. Oldest leaves. Okay. The biggest leaves. The oldest, biggest leaves. Okay. Um, and and, and so with, you'll, with the magnesium, you'll see tiger striping. With nitrogen, you'll see it go from yellow to green. You'll see a gradient where it goes yellow at the tip. It would still be yellow all the way up, but it's just a nice, easy fade to green. Okay, um, so it's, it's 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 sucking it back to what it's trying to you, keep its core safe. Exactly, you can okay. see the plant suck the green from the leaf and keep it into the and put it into okay. the main body of the plant from the okay. leaf. So you see this nice nice beautiful gradient from yellow to green. Okay. Um, and there's no spotting, there's no um, hard stripes or anything. It's just a fade. Okay. Um, so if you see that that gradual fade on your leaves, you probably need to use more nitrogen, um, or your, your 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 pH is too low and you can't get the nitrogen. Okay. So to uh, it sounds like for the most part, I, I want to try to keep my pH up a little bit higher in the range of six to six eight prophylactically to make all these problems kind of go away. Exactly. But w is there situations where I want my pH a little lower so I can uh, express different things to get different elements in there? Um, in veg, you'll see the the elements want to. The, all the vegetative elements are in the 6.2 to 6.4 pH, and in bloom, it's more like 6.4 to 6.8. So okay. just different micronutrients, different levels of elements that it needs throughout its different phases. So in bloom, I can push higher, but in, in veg, I really want to fix these problems so I don't have to just blow my pH up real high just to, to fix exactly. those things. So 
Um, I see that, that I have a nitrogen problem. How do I know for a fact that it is that that's the problem? Are there other things that would cause that same thing? You sure. Um, uh, low pH would cause you okay. to have a nitrogen deficiency because oh. your pH is too low, the plant doesn't have access okay. to it anymore. Okay. Um, then uh, the other main issue with nitrogen is that some people use too much and then you have nitrogen toxicity. So it's about finding the right levels of, of oh, nitrogen. Okay. If you use a poor soil, it can cause the plants to have too much nitrogen. If you use um, not, if you're just running low on nitrogen and you take your part per million or below 200 part per million, uh -huh. you're gonna have a deficiency. So, so if I had too much nitrogen, I would see it in my PPM numbers though, correct? You see it in your PPM numbers way oh, okay. high, exactly. And if you see deficiency, you usually see your PPM numbers go real low. Okay, so I've, I've, if I saw those P high PPM numbers, I would have flushed, I would have fixed this beforehand. Yep. And so if, if, I've, if I've been smart and done my flush and my pH and all that stuff with my slurry test, mm -hmm. I know that if I see that yellowing, it is almost certainly a deficiency, not an abundance and when of you it. Check your, 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 if you have, see a nitrogen deficiency, more mm -hmm. times than not, if you check your slurry, your PPMs are really, really low. Nitrogen makes a large portion of our part per million. Okay, so if you're part shockingly per million, low, more so low yeah. than a magnesium. I, it's yeah. more much easier to, to diagnose that through a PPM than it would be any of these other ones because yeah, it's the big, big kahuna. Nitrogen is a big, a big molecule for the entire process. Sure. Okay. So if you see your nitrogen levels low, they can usually tell you you're low on all the other food too. Okay. But nitrogen deficiencies, more so than not, will tell you through like through that gradient. So if you see that gradient, run your slurries and see your part per million is real low. It's like I need to add more. How do I get that nitrogen in there? We use Pegasus potion. Which is kelpie? It uh, it's nope. it's feather mealy. Feather mealy. Um, there's a lot of it's broken down feathers, digested feathers essentially. So all okay. the proteins and all the nitrogen in the feathers just kind of break open, and the plant can have access to it. So I, you can either drench it or you can foliar spray it. Again, we're going back to the foliar spraying as a band aid okay. for the problem. Um, Pegasus potion is the go-to nitrogen source. Okay. You can okay. also use a uh, trigger as well as 8% okay. nitrogen from amino acids. All um, right. That works too. You just want to get those those nitrogen molecules into the plant if you notice it is starting to be um, deficient. Okay. So I would just use a little, I, I would use this if I wasn't using it. I would use more if I wasn't using it. And you would uh, also maybe, where would you use the trigger? As um, part of your feeding regimen, you or, can feed it or a foliar spray. Foliar spray. And, anytime you have a, a root issue or anytime you have a, a, a deficiency, mm. foliar spraying is always the quickest. Okay. Uh, then you can always, but make sure you drench also because you want to fill the soil with all the food. Okay. So, so would you use these together or use one or the other? I like using them if I have it. If I know I have it, you go through all your diagnostics and you're like, uh -huh. all right, uh -huh. I have a nitrogen deficiency. Okay. I would use these two together, foliar spray once a day, once every other day for a week, and okay. then watch the plant be green and healthy and happy after that. Beautiful. Okay, so magnesium, nitrogen. What do we got going here? What so are we doing? Poseidon time. Um, what, what deficiency, well, let's just, what deficiency would, would you be looking at here? I would be looking for potassium. So potassium deficiency, how would that manifest? Um, it'd be spotting on the leaves, um, big like necrotic spots on the leaves. Um, Not like yellow, dead but dead. Spots. Dead, like brown, brown. spots. Yeah, brown, brown spots. spots. Okay. Um, the thing about this is, and the reason why I, I wanted to bring it up, because more times than not, you don't have a potassium deficiency. Potassium is needed at low to moderate times. Everybody just thinks, I need more and more potassium than I really do. Oh, okay, so, so it is possible to have a potassium deficiency, just, but it is almost never the case. It's never the case. And if you okay. do think you need more potassium, do not just go out there and grab a potassium product off the shelf. Okay. Don't just go grab a kelp that has 17% potassium in it. Don't go grab other products that have 10, 11, 12% potassium in okay. it. Okay. Use the nectar source of potassium. Okay. And that's because you do need some potassium just at lower, lower to moderate okay. increments. If you do go overboard on potassium, you're going to see lockout, magnesium lockout. You're going to see other ions get locked up because oh, potassium okay. antagonizes the magnesium and the calcium. Okay. So before we just jump and think you have a potassium deficiency, all right. Just understand, I mean, it probably is not a potassium deficiency. It's probably a lockout or deficiency of something else. Are there other things that would cause brown spots on the plant? Yes. Um, which is the other one, which is a calcium deficiency. Okay. But using too much potassium can cause your calcium to be locked out and so you'll have a oh, calcium okay. deficiency. So, so so most important thing when it comes to potassium lockout or when it comes to potassium deficiency, make sure all your slurries are in, in line. Okay. Make sure you know where everything's added up. And then at the very end, if you need potassium, use the Poseidon time because it's a half percent oh, okay. of potassium. So if I see brown spots on my leaves, what's job one? Job one is slurry. Okay. If you have brown spots on your leaves, you are probably having a too high of a part per million. 
Okay. Um, and if you do have, say, um, an issue with uh, 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 plants curling, if you read your, your slurries, you uh -huh. see your plants starting to claw downward, they start okay. to have spots on them, uh -huh. Uh -huh. your slurry reads under 200 parts per million, it's hungry. You okay. need more food. Okay. Which means calcium is your food source, so make sure you're you're not adding too much potassium. So I probably don't have a potassium deficiency, but if I do, I want to treat it very gently with a little bit, not a lot. Exactly. Okay. So now you mentioned clawing. You always hear this like uh, turning up or clawing over. Mm -hmm. uh, the leaves constrict, constricting up or down, what is that a sign of? So the the one of the top five issues I see uh -huh. is the claw leaves clawing downward. Downward, yeah. Downward. And that comes from um, too much bloom chaos use. Okay. That comes from uh, not enough calcium or amino acids in the plant. So it's a cal actually a calcium deficiency. So it's oh, a hungry okay. plant. So when you start to see them claw downwards, like more times than not, if you increase your calcium load and you increase your amino acids load, the, the leaves will, will come up again. Okay, so let me ask you that then. So you're talking amino, you're talking Athenas? Athenas. Okay, so let's just, we can maybe get us another video if it's a big, long thing, but how do these work together? So, um, calcium builds new cells. Okay. Plants are clawed down, they're having a, a, a malfunction and creating new cells inside the leaves to keep them uh, straight. Oh, okay. So you need calcium, which is 80% of every new cell is sure. made with okay. calcium. Okay, and that's, and then you, that's your... You your Herc and that's your Demeters. Okay. Um, and then you need amino acids because those cells, that, that the flat cells that make the leaves... Right. ...are proteins. They're, they're, oh, okay. they're, they're, they're molecules that are built around amino acids. They're molecules built around different proteins. Okay. So it's actually a protein malfunction. So you need to add amino acids which build in the proteins to straighten out the leaves. Oh, okay. So you need calcium, you need amino acids. And, and more times than not, when you see a gerald claw downward, your part per million are probably going to be pretty low and you need to increase the food. Increase okay. the amount of calcium and, and amino acids. So it's, it's a calcium deficiency. Different than other situations where I might be hitting it hard with my Bloom Chaos and my Herc. Right. I'm hitting it hard with my Athena's Amina's, my Demeter's Destiny and my Herc to straighten those back up, get a healthy plant again. Yep. Okay. More times than not, the clawing down is a lack of calcium. Okay. So that's how you can kind of tell is like looking at the eagle claw downward uh -huh. is to make sure you have calcium. Okay. The best way to get calcium is to reduce your potassium loads. Okay. Don't use high potassium products. Keep uh -huh. high calcium products. Okay. Um, and if you do need... Um, and this is my potassium product for the most part. Right. So this is for unusual circumstances. That's, yeah, that's cool. That's for, I mean, we, every plant needs some different. Sometimes it needs okay. more potassium than not. Okay. Um, and we find that the Poseidon enzyme is all the potassium you need if you do need potassium. Sparingly, if at all. Yes. Would you always use some of this or would you have plenty I, of potassium from the rest of the line without this for the most part in most cases? For the most cases? part, you always have enough potassium in the nutrient line. You don't need to add potassium to the nectar. Okay. So you would maybe have a regimen and for the, a lot of times you would not have the Poseidon enzyme as part of that regimen? I would or very your, small I would, I would foliar spray the Poseidon enzyme. Oh, okay. Or use a little bit all the time. Do tell about that with the, the why would you foliar, because I mean it says on your foliar spray, why is this a foliar? Foliar over, and is this the kelp? I, I, I know my brain's not working with the kelp. <laughs> I was thinking the other with the kelp. I'm a dummy. That's, that's so, okay, kelp. so that, that would, this would be, for the most part, some sort of thing you would do as a foliar spray. And you may not do this at all. Is that what you're saying? I, I like spraying kelp products. Okay. Kelp products relieve stress. Okay. Kelp products help stimulate growth. Okay. Um, kelp products also provide a nice little uh, consortium of micronutrients and potassium. Uh, okay. So I like to keep that in my foliar spray regimens all the time. All right. So this is a good thing in your foliar to give micronutrients and all that stuff. Yep. And Not then, necessarily, except in rare cases, would it be something where you would, you might I mean, do a little in your, your drench. Yeah. I'll never a lot unless it's a unusual. Right. I'll add, okay. my, I'll add a little bit to my teas. I'll add a little bit to my feeds if I want a nice little kelp, kelp in there. Okay. Uh, but like Zeus juice has kelp in it. You know, so it's very much a utility item. Or if you need more potassium, use Poseidon Zyme. If you want to have a kelp product that you can foliar spray, because people just love foliar spraying kelp products. Okay. Poseidon Zyme's my go to for foliar spraying. Very cool. Uh, not needed into that nectar line by any means, not a okay. necessity, okay. but a very helpful tool. Okay. Well, then I guess what I want to do next is I maybe want to cut it off there. And then what I want to talk to you about is um, next time about practical ways exactly how you go about doing all these things with uh, fixing these deficiencies. And sure. then after that, we talked about how you could have a, the Bloom Chaos and the Herc could cause a problem. Let's talk about the relationship between the, the Herc and the Bloom Chaos. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, that's that for today.
Okay, that was fun. I think we covered it pretty well, but if you have any questions, let me know in the comments and we'll talk about those. Otherwise, I'll see you next time in part three when we're going to be talking about the whole process uh, day to day, how you actually go through this, and then uh, part four after that. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll see you next time. I love you. The OCG Fam Show. It's pretty good. It happens every day. It's the OCG Fam Show.